Works. All right, so if you want to take your recipe sheet, there's some at each table. Um, the simple tomato sauce, when I came on this recipe, I was glad to have finally found a spaghetti sauce that I really liked. And it's simple, my favorite word, when it comes to cooking, for sure. So, honestly, I've never made it with San Marzano tomatoes before this week. Because I have a garden, so I use the tomatoes as they come out of the garden in whatever form or shape they are. I don't even bother to peel them. I just cook it down, run them in the blender, takes care of all the peelings, and then you just cook it down to the consistency you want. So just know that you can use whatever tomato sauce or form of tomatoes you want. But this is what San Marzano looks like. It's a type of Italian paste tomato, I believe. And some people really swear by this as being the best. So tonight you can be the judge if you like how the spaghetti sauce tastes. And um, we are having some breadsticks tonight. So I'm going to demonstrate how those are made. And since it's done in stages, I'm going to get this started before we have our meal. So if you want to turn to the second page where it says breadsticks. Um, we start with a fourth of a cup of our water, and we're going to put in the yeast. Yeast is what makes it raise, and usually there's some form of sugar or starch in a bread recipe because that feeds the yeast. So I'm going to put in a tablespoon of honey. And it could be honey, could be sugar, whatever form of sweetener you want in there. So it's good to kind of just get that dissolved. If you want to just make sure your yeast is working this way, you can just let it set for five minutes. And if it bubbles, then you know you got some good yeast. How many of you have a bread machine at home? Two people? Well, you have a really nice bread machine. Um, there's the really nice bread machine called the Bosch, which will do four to six loaves at a time. But if um, you just happen to have a bread machine from a thrift shop, you can let the bread machine do your muscle work of kneading. Just put it on the dough cycle and uh, let that do that for you. Then pull it out, put it in your normal loaf pans or make it into breadsticks, or make it into pizza, or whatever you want to do, and it does the work for you. And this, usually you can find them for five to 15 bucks at a. I got one I've never used, but I didn't even know what it was, I gave it away. Oh, too bad. To my sister, <laughs> of all the time. <laughs> I'm like, why are you telling me I'm going to go just give her this recipe and tell her to make you some since she's got it. <laughs> All right, to that we're going to add two tablespoons of oil. And oil can kind of help retard the yeast. The oil and salt both do that so that it doesn't get too active and then it'll blow way up and go poof, fall on you. We don't want that to happen. So we're going to add some salt and we'll add the rest of our water. And there's your liquid. Then we'll start adding flour in. I think we have everything else in there. Pretty simple ingredients to make bread. Yeah, I got salt. <laughs> we don't want to double salt it. So we're going to start with a cup. And when you make bread, it will tell you how many cups to do, but you really don't just go and add all of the flour it says to you, because if it's a, it can depend on the weather, it can depend on a lot of things, how well you measure, if your water is really going to need that much flour. So this stage right here would be kind of called a sponge stage. 
So it's still quite liquid. Y'all can see this in the yeah, screen, I'm assuming. Oh, the bag away. Oh, I moved bag. There you go. Bad bag. <laughs> oh, and I didn't talk about this flour. When you're wanting to use more whole grains, because the whole grain has the fiber and the germ and all the parts of the wheat still in it, but sometimes whole wheat can just make a thing too heavy. If you're in, in transition of moving from all white flour toward a more healthy flour, <coughs> Look for the white wheat flour. I got this at Meyer, and this makes a nice, more of a lighter color, as you can see, and it's great for muffins and pancakes and that kind of thing. So we're just gonna keep stirring. We won't be able to use this whisk too much longer, but what I wanna do while I'm whisking is to really work it good, because at this stage, we can start getting that gluten worked up without using quite as much muscle yet. So if you have a stand mixer or something, you might want to do this part with that. Can you tell how it's kind of getting stringy? When it's getting lumpy and stringy like that, it's the gluten. And it's gluten, I, it does give some people problems. That's lately uh, getting to be a worse and worse thing, but it's gluten that traps those air bubbles and makes your bread rise nicely. So if you work up the gluten well, you'll have a better rise on your bread. So we has got people that can't have gluten, and that's what makes the bread rise. What is, what is gluten-free? What is that flat? Yeah, they have to do... Have a flat bread? <laughs> They have to do other things to make gluten-free bread. It's a little tricky. <laughs> if there's enough interest um, that people would like to have a gluten-free night, we could do that sometime. I've. I was just curious. Yeah, it's. I'm not gonna worry about it. Oh, that's good. It's nice if you don't have to worry about it. it makes life simpler. So I'm going to do two cups of the whole wheat and then I'm going to switch and add white for the rest of it. So you can see it's still pretty sticky. I might bend the spoon, it's getting kind of stiff. We'll see, it's not going to take another whole cup of flour, I'm pretty sure, but I'll just do a little at a time. And starting to pull away from the sides. You can probably see that. So can you make hot cinnamon with on top of that? Yeah, you could roll this out and make cinnamon rolls. Absolutely could. Very versatile dough. Yep, could be pizza dough, could be breadsticks, could be dinner rolls if you make it into little dinner roll shapes. So we'd probably make about 12 rolls and put it in a 9 by 13. Let them raise all together. I think, no, I don't know. Around, Just a little <laughs> bit sticky. <laughs> Do what? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. So you didn't need to let it, it bubble up before you start adding the flour? You don't have to. It's just to get that incorporated first. I mean, the bread machine doesn't. <laughs> That's true. I always do it just in case. Because oh. yes, your water and your, your flour can be tougher now, but you don't have to, it's preference. Yeah. And then at some point, you're going to want to get in there with your hands. Oh, yeah, it's still kind of sticky. So learning the right texture for your bread is part of making good bread. This feels like pretty nice. I had some earlier that I made this week in the bread machines. And I don't just put it in the bread machine and go off and leave it either. I pay attention to it while it's first mixing. And if it's looking like it's really stiff, 
I add water, which it's hard to do. Um, or if it's looking way too sticky, you add a little more flour, just a bit at a time. So when you need, you want to take, take the side and push it down, turn it a quarter turn, and do the same. So we are at the stage where we're just going to let this rest for a little bit, and then we can eat our supper while we wait. So I'll stick this off to the side. And I'll just run down through what you're having tonight. Does, there. That, make, does that make I don't do that? I, it would not be quite the same as pie dough. You could, you could maybe roll it thin and do it like a top um, pot pie crust, possibly. I have a question. Yes. Are you let things raise with meat or just go around and raise them? Warm. Yeah, you want them in a warm, non-drafty place. Well, that's why they put a towel over there. Yes. So I'll get something over the top of that in a minute here. So we will be having um, the simple tomato sauce will be coming out, and we will have the option of regular spaghetti noodles to have that with. But for people who are needing gluten-free or... If you just are watching carbs or whatever, um, they do make noodles out of zucchini and butternut squash. So therefore, you're eating just straight up vegetables, which is definitely a step up from pasta noodles. So we have a little bit of each of those for you to try tonight. Um, then we have el vegan garlic alfredo noodles in our crock pot over there. Oh yes, here's our... Veggie spirals found at Meyer. You can also you can buy a spiralizer and make your own veggie noodles if you want. And the breadsticks we have some extras right there. So I want to let you know. So we've got spaghetti squash. Yes, spaghetti squash is another one. And we've cooked it, and then we've taken the squash out and let it cool, and then froze it. That's what we use for our chicken alfredo. Oh, so instead cool. of using actual pasta, we're using spaghetti squash. Yes, thank you for reminding so, me. And it's delicious. Spaghetti squash. <laughs> yeah. Anybody here ever had spaghetti squash? It works great in place of that. Um, the Italian white bean soup is just a free bonus recipe for you to try at home. I included it here because it goes great with breadsticks and salad, and it's super simple and very tasty for a quick and easy meal. We have our Italian chopped salad. Um, it's called chopped salad because everything in it is small chopped pieces. Um, normally, it would have a dressing already stirred into it, but I don't like to do that because if you have leftovers, it's not great. So um, the dressing that you can see is separated there with oil on top. That's the dressing that is listed here, the quick dressing. Then uh, the vegan creamy Italian dressing is in the squirt bottle. So there's two options there for you to try out. I have kept the tomatoes separate, but you can add those if you like them. Um, we have Dawn's meatless meatballs. She made those for us tonight, and I'm going to demonstrate them a little later. Skillet green beans. Um, maybe I should have Dawn tell you her method, but I guess we have it typed in here. It's pretty simple to do, and they're very tasty. And then to top it all off, we have our lemon olive oil cake. So, hope you all enjoy our Italian... What is that? Oh, wow. Well, all the more for us. I didn't say I was going to eat them. Oh, okay. All right. We got everything out. We got breadsticks coming. So we'll be ready for you in a couple of minutes. All right, if you want to direct your attention up here while you finish eating. I had this with my favorite. You can see our dough is doubled in size.
I think so. Oh. I'm on. Am I on? Yeah. She put it on. So we can just punch it down a little bit. Yeah, you can do that with bread. And I'm just gonna. I don't. Does it say an hour on there? I'd, I, no, I was just saying. Isn't that normal with, with bread? Or with bread like sticks, it's not quite as critical as with a loaf of bread because they they're not gonna have to rise all that much. So, and we are speeding things up a little bit here. <laughs> if you um, if your kitchen's a little drafty and you want to put it in a warm place, turn your oven on for maybe a minute just till it gets warmed up and then turn it back off and use that to proof your things with. When I make bread, I'll do that and then once it's braised enough, I just turn the oven on up to 350 and bake it. So you can do that to you. All right. Come on out. Now can you freeze these breadsticks? Yes. They can definitely be frozen. So it'd be worth your time to make extra and put away some in the freezer. Or if you're like Rick and I and you only eat about maybe six or eight of them at a meal, just package them up in, in small portions. It's a little bit sticky. And now we're just going to roll this out about the shape of our pan. I'm going to go ahead and spray this. have edges you could probably do this right on the pan but <coughs> so get it pretty close to the shape you want it and you can lift it up and throw it <coughs> just throw <laughs> throw it right on there <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty wet dough. So you want it fairly thin? Yeah, because it raises, it'll double. Okay. Um, uh, the ones I made here came out a little thicker because I think I ended up with a little bit more <coughs> dough uh -huh. per batch because I did those in the bread machine. And you can just press it down too if you have to. Try to get it even. And you can, if you like being fussy, roll all these as individual breadsticks. But if you prefer just being lazy, you could just. These are really. I don't know what they want here. I just run the rocker thing, or you can use a knife or a pizza cutter. That's cheating. <laughs> it's simplifying, not cheating. Oh, okay. Work <laughs> smarter, not harder. Yeah. There's, there's someone that blogs called the lazy genius. Another way to state the same thing. And then I just cut it down the middle, or you can do it in thirds. And then we're just going to let that rise until double. And I think I'll stick it in the <coughs> oven that's kind of warm over here. We'll let it rise while I do meatballs. Just don't turn the oven on now. <laughs> so how did y'all like the meatballs? I like them. Thanks to Dawn for that recipe. And she was willing to experiment. <coughs> And try a little bit different ingredients. So, obviously, you can do it as the recipe states if you're 
fine with eating eggs and cheese, but if you're trying to move toward or cannot for some reason have dairy, <coughs> this is just kind of an example of how you can take a favorite and just tweak a few ingredients. So, um, this is going to serve as our egg replacement, this tofu. Um, the cake did not have eggs in it. And two things in that recipe that were taking the place of eggs is flaxseed ground and cornstarch. You can, in baked goods like that, just take a tablespoon of cornstarch to replace an egg. Or you can um, throw in flax meal, or sometimes people will whip it with a little bit of water and let it sit and get... Whole flaxseed or ground flaxseed? Ground flaxseed. Definitely needs to be ground. That, and you use both in the cake? Yes, the cake had both. Yes. So when you get a water packed tofu like this, um, <coughs> I don't. Yeah. I've never been able to just peel this thing off, so I always just cut it. Me too. And it does have water in it, so be over the sink when you do this. I don't know if you can see it draining. I usually put the hole in the top and the bottom, and then set it in the sink while I do something else. It's nice to let the water drain out of it, but if you don't want to go do something else and you just want to get the job done, yeah. you do this. Yeah. <laughs> so, that got the water out pretty good. <clears throat> and I'll just dump this and use the bowl. Okay. Now since this is going to need to be crumbled, or you could, if you wanted to, put it in the blender. Um, but that will just dirty another thing you got to wash. So why would you want to do that? So just break it up. Or use a fork. Or use a fork, or a potato masher. Yeah, I use my hand <coughs> Or pretend you're from India and use your hands for everything. Yep. <laughs> All right. And for the cheese, I'm going to replace that with some Daya cheese. This uh, kind of keeps evolving now. <coughs> it's made with some oat cream blend, so they keep kind of changing their recipe up. We'll see how that works out. Breadcrumbs. How many of you make your own breadcrumbs? How many of you eat the heels of your bread or throw them away? Put them in your freezer. Take those heels and collect them up in your freezer. Then every once in a while when you need breadcrumbs and don't have it, get out your blender and make you some breadcrumbs. And then put that back in the freezer for later. So that's what this is. Saved heels. Or if you had bread that turned out a little too hearty or whatever, turn it into breadcrumbs. Can you tell me how to make breadcrumbs again? So you take the heels, yeah, just any any pieces of bread you're not going to eat. I usually break them up. Not the moldy bread. ones, of course. Right. <laughs> you break that part off and feed it to the outside animals. Yeah. Shall they yeah. plump in the blender? No. no. I don't have it frozen. Oh, you do it when it's frozen. It's a little you bit thawed <coughs> or it's really uh, bouncy around in there. Before I put them in the freezer, I break them into smaller pieces. Yes, yes, yes. You break, oh, break them up and do a few at a time. Okay. Or a food processor, whichever works better. Okay. But it's, <coughs> yeah, then you're not wasting bread and you're not wasting fresh, good bread in, by making it into crumbs. That's my thoughts on it. And then um, the ground nuts, you can use whatever you have. This is actually a mixture of pecan meal. And then I ran out of that, so I ground some walnuts. You could probably use almond meal, too. That's Almond meal, I think, would be too floury. It might be, but it is still, a, it's really a nut meal. I haven't tried the almond meal, but... It would be a lighter color, too. Yeah. And then onion. I used a half cup, as the recipe states, but Don uses a cup, so... I made a mistake to a cup. You can't have too much onion. Yeah. It could use more, for sure. Or less. But we'll make up for it with garlic. <coughs> you know, when it's... You don't even know what's in there. Yes, when it says three cloves of garlic, well, garlic cloves can be that big or that big. I know so mine are kind of bigger. 
I never use what it says. I just probably almost double it. Yeah. I just always use that whole bulb. Just do that out there, the whole bulb? Yeah. Yeah, that would be a lot. And then we'll try it with this cheese. This will be something new for me. And Dawn says she actually grates for her um, onion, which makes it more juicy, which does help it hold together better. Mm. And I learned today that when you're peeling the skin off the onion, the side that's got the, the, the root side, or the root side, you just kind of put a little indent around that so you can peel it off. And that keeps your onion together. Because when you get down to the end, oh. the first one kind of went all over everywhere, <laughs> and I couldn't grate it. You had a onion explosion? Yes. So this does seem to me like it's going to need some moisture. So. <coughs> need Dawn to go out and grate us some onion. <laughs> Let me see. It's pretty dry. Yeah. Think a tad bit of water? Probably. All right. Or a tablespoon or two at a time. Yeah, that's probably about what this is. <coughs> probably could blend that tofu with a little water and throw oh. your nuts in there and even onion. And then it would all be ground up for you nice and juicy. Probably still could be a little wetter, huh? Try to keep it all together. Oh, well, <coughs> not too bad. It feels moister than it looks. Mm -hmm. I have my tray. And I did spread the cookie sheet. Yes. Or parchment paper. Do one or the other. I don't want to get this on the equipment. So you form your balls like that, or you can try if you have a little scoop. I don't know how this will do. It would measure it out for you. But I think it would be just as easy. And there you have it. You just go through the whole bowl and form them. So by putting them in the oven, rather than the heated oil. You've still got some oil on it because you got it on the pan, but that's going to decrease some of the fat in the recipe. And we were talking over here, Carla said she took some a meatball recipe and put a single layer in the air fryer. Oh, Yummy. okay. Blocked Yummy. them up and made them much better. That it was be like fun. they were deep fat fried. Oh, nice. Yeah. See, that's <coughs> one piece of equipment I don't have yet in my kitchen. Ah. I have an Instapot air fryer combo. Okay, that would be fun too. All right, so that's how you do the meatballs, and we'll just see what our breadsticks are looking like. <clears throat> they are starting to raise up a little bit. I'd give them another 10 to 20 minutes and then bake them. And they will raise a little bit more once they're baking too. And since these are kind of thin, I think it said 15 minutes did it? I'd check them at 10 for sure. Um, also, my oven tends to run hot. So I, I do it down to 375 instead of 400, but you know your own oven. And just watch them close when you got it that hot and they're this thin. <laughs> just a word of warning. Is there any other questions <coughs> about any of the recipes you've seen tonight? Looks like everybody's. Okay. <laughs> any, um, Anybody have a certain thing they would like to see done in the future? Yes. 
gluten-free options. Okay, we'll work on some gluten-free options. We had a couple here tonight. Mm -hmm. They're good. <laughs> well, I would think you could make those meatballs <coughs> with a gluten-free bread already. Yes, breadcrumbs. you could. I, think. I would think it would work. Definitely. So, all right. Thank you all for coming, and we will close with a prayer, and we'll see you next month. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for being with us here in our gathering tonight, and for the good food you've provided for us. Be with us now while we separate and go our different ways, and uh, bring us back together next month for another fun cooking class. In your name we pray, amen.